Welcome to the Origins Podcast and the Origins Project Foundation. I'm your host here, Lawrence Krauss, and I want to introduce what may be a new continuing series, which is uh, really um, goes back to one of our first guests and one of our most popular podcasts with none other than Noam Chomsky. I asked Noam if we could periodically update our discussion by talking about current events. So here you go. Current events with Noam Chomsky. Apparently, a situation at the border where, for the last month, the largest number of refugees the 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 uh, at the border in in recent times. Um, they the Bush the Biden administration was was originally said we're not going to take any more refugees than the Trump administration did, and then and then there was pushback. Um, that's the, that's the concern at one end. At the other end, maybe there's movement towards the Dreamers and maybe taking care of children. But what's your assessment of where this is heading? Well, first of all, we should remember that the Republican leadership is publicly salivating with glee. Um, And the more people storm the border, uh, the better it is. We can frighten Americans with Mm -hmm. the, you know, the, uh, the great replacement. They're coming here to kill all the white people. We've got to have lots of guns and assault rifles and defend ourselves. So they love it. And if the Democrats make any minimally humane move, the whole Republican establishment will be all over them. You're communists. You want to kill the Americans. We can come back to office. Okay. We know that's going to happen. In fact, they're saying it. So the question is, what should be done? Well, what should be done is, first of all, uh, eliminate this, over, get rid of the structure that's been imposed since Clinton actually got much worse under Trump. The program since Clinton, early 90s, was try to drive refugees into the most hostile, brutal areas like right south of where I live, you know what it's like. It's miserable. You can't barely survive. So drive refugees into there. They'll die or get killed or something, and then it'll stop other refugees from coming. Well, that Clinton policy didn't work. The situation we've created, we've created, notice, in Central America is so murderous and destructive that they're still coming. In fact, they're coming. We're responsible for that, after all. It's not just, you know, century of terror and building up to Reagan's terrorist wars in the 80s. People are still fleeing from that. But many other things. For one thing, we pour guns into the region. Uh, Most of the guns there are coming from the United States. Hmm. Can't buy guns in Mexico. It's very hard but you can come across the border, ask me, I can, I don't even know which end of a gun to hold, but <laughs> I could go into a gun store and say, I want to buy an assault rifle, hand it over to my favorite cartel uh, guy. That's the kind of, I'm exaggerating, but that's yeah. the kind of thing that happens. Mm-hmm. So the place is flooded with guns, uh, homicide, murders, gangs all over. Uh, it's exacerbated by the, severe effects of global warming. Uh, Obama made his contribution by supporting the military coup in Honduras. Obama and Clinton, uh, there was a military coup in 2009, which eliminated a moderately reformist candidate, Mel Zelaya, restored the extreme brutality of the Honduran so-called 14 families, the aristocracy that owns mm-hmm. the place, became one of the murder capitals of the world. Now, there was an election under military rule condemned by the whole hemisphere, uh, except the United States. Uh, U.S. Uh, uh, talked about the very favorable steps of a move to democracy, the usual line. Uh, place is unlivable. Combination of... Uh, global warming, murders, atrocities. So that's the plurality of refugees. They're coming from a recent atrocity, Uh, but it goes way back. 
So what do we, we, we do? First of all, we should remove the punitive, savage policy of driving refugees into areas where they're going to get killed and die with a brutal border patrol uh, chasing after them, free to do anything they want. There's no surveillance in Portland, where you were, when Trump wanted to uh, smash the place up. He couldn't send the military because they were unwilling to do it. So he sent the shock troops of the border patrol. Mm. Their, their training is just, you know, kick anybody you like in the face. That's what we do. So we'll do it in Portland. Uh, the, uh, so get rid of all that stuff. Allow the relief systems to work. Now, there are very courageous, honorable people. No More Deaths is the group that goes out into the desert, tries to provide a little bit of help to any refugee who isn't, doesn't die on the way, maybe a water bottle or some medical treatment, allow them to work. Reconstruct an asylum system, a decent legal asylum system in which people can come through the easy areas, not the harsh desert, come through the easy areas, apply for asylum. That means hiring more judges, more lawyers, mm -hmm. facilities. It's kind of a rounding error in the budget. You know, it's not even there. And so they can be treated more or less decently, stop the policy of trying to compel Mexico to drive them, keep them away from our borders. Brutal, malicious policy. But the only thing, good thing you can say about it is Europeans are even worse, okay, <laughs> if that makes anybody feel good. But uh, the uh, so end that, and then do something about what's driving them out of Central America. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're not leaving because they want to live in uh, Portland. Yeah. They want to live at home, but home is impossible. Well, home is, that's, why people, that's why people are refugees, is because home is impossible in general. Yeah. <laughs> and so they uh, you know, do whatever we can to help uh, reconstruct the current, uh, the wreckage for which we're largely responsible. We have the technology. So those people who are being driven out of their homes because they, they have small farms and they can't produce, we have technology that allows people to grow more with less in harsher conditions. And, and, and it seems to me it would be in our interest to try and export that technology as much as possible. It would also be in our interest to listen to them a lot of camp campesinos could tell us how you can do it. Uh, they have better agricultural techniques than we do very often. So yes, we could work with them with support, give them whatever aid we can, including technology, and uh, try to help them rebuild the places we've destroyed, stop the flow of guns. Absolutely essential to stop the massive flow of guns to Mexico and Central America, it's murdering people all over. All of these things can be done, but there's one big impediment. As soon as the Democrats try to do anything minimally humane, the Republican establishment comes down on them like a ton of bricks with all the kind of propaganda we know, and it helps get them back, back, get them back into office, and then tell you the honest truth, if they get back into office, we may be finished. Well, it's, it is, but because of global warming. Well, there are so lots that's of reasons. The reality yeah. that we face. Now, there are, well, three, I have three follow-ups here. There, like the case of Afghanistan, if people, if one has faith that people know what's really happening, they might do the right thing. It seems to me that there are two areas where public opinion, at least where where Republican pushback won't, doesn't seem to be working. One is the dreamers, and, and two is the treatment of children at the border. Those are two areas where it seems to me that, that humane treatment actually will help the Democrats. No? Depends. Depends how powerful the famous mighty Wurlitzer is, mm -hmm. the huge propaganda uh, system which can be used very effectively to demonize, uh, condemn, uh, you know, frighten and so on. 
that we're not the only country in the world who have done it. Mm -hmm. uh, look at what Hitler was able to do about yeah. the, the Jews. Mm -hmm. And Germany was the most civilized country in the world okay, in the 1920s. Yeah. Unfortunately, these things work. Yeah. Uh, no, I'd, well, we've said it before. And, uh, I, and I, you'll, you'll correct me because I can remember whether it's Goebbels or Goering who said that if you want people to do what you want them to do, it doesn't matter whether you have a democracy or dictatorship, just make them afraid. It works very well. And this is a very frightened country. Yeah, fact, yeah. Actually, I just, you may have seen it. There was a poll, Pew poll, a couple of days ago. Quite interesting. It uh, gave people 15 choices as to what were the major problems facing the country. Uh, among Republicans, at the very bottom, 14% was climate change the least important, only the most important question in human history, but the least urgent problem. At the top was illegal immigration and the federal deficit. Hmm. That's the world that we're living in. Mm -hmm. A lot of, if you want to know the answer to the, all of these problems, a lot of it is educate the American people. Yeah. A very severe problem right here. We don't have to go abroad to fix things up. We have a lot of work to do right here. We're, yes, we to do. create a civilized society. I, you know, as a as a sort of immigrant, I mean, you know, I I I, I was born in the United States, but I I, I grew up in Canada and then moved to the United States. Uh, that uh, that was a very important thing for me. Living in two different countries really dispelled any sense of nationalism I had. Um, because you see, you, you, you realize that the picture you've been given on one side of the border is very different than the other. But, but maybe this, I know this is utterly naive, but I've often wondered, would it be the end of the world? I mean, would an open border, if, if, if everyone who wanted to come to the United States came, would it destroy the United States? I mean, from, let's say from Central America and, and Mexico. Could, I mean, could we, could if we had a relatively open border policy, would that be a disaster? Probably improve the economy. There's a lot of studies which show that the first generation of immigrants is some kind of cost. Second generation usually improves the economy. Yeah. They're hardworking. They do the jobs that other people don't want to do. Establish businesses, pay taxes. Pretty soon you get a better economy. Yeah probably would be good for the country yeah certainly it's a very empty country after all it exactly it's pretty empty and i remember when i lived in phoenix here and the ridiculous sheriff um you know it, 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 they were arresting people who were helping the economy who were paying their taxes and they and 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 doing jobs and instead costing a tremendous amount of money and this, the net effect was to hurt the phoenix economy by these ridiculous waves of rounding up immigrants well, that's generally true I mean, you know, after all, that's been the history of the country for a long time. Uh, up until the 1920s, the United States welcomed immigrants because you had to replace the population you were exterminating. It's not exactly the way we put it. but Not exactly. only welcomed, but tricked them into coming, giving them land and telling them it was productive when it wasn't. A lot of Jews, Jews, I was just speaking to a physicist whose family came from Poland to Wisconsin because they thought they could farm. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's you know, same with my parents. Yeah. Right before the ban. 1920, of course, for, except for Orientals, they mm. were kept on racist grounds. Yeah, yeah. But uh, 1924, the major immigration law was passed, which uh, was aimed specifically at Italians and Jews. They didn't say that. Uh, Southern Europeans and Eastern Europeans, which meant Italians and Jews. Mm -hmm. But that lasted until the 1960s. Uh, lots of people went to gas chambers because of that. Yeah. My whole extended family, for some, yeah. they couldn't get into the United States. Even after the Holocaust survivors couldn't get into the United States. I mean, it was a very brutal policy. Yeah. Well, since then, there's been other modifications. Uh, you know, Mexicans were allowed in to do the dirty work of fruit picking, which nobody wants to do. 
uh, apple picking in Washington and so on. But, uh, and then uh, the um, edu educated sectors like uh, skilled Indian engineers, mm -hmm. we want them, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's a, if the policy is designed for our benefit, what, or perceived benefit, I should say, because it's not actual benefit. Yeah. But the uh, accommodating to racism, fear, irrational fear, and so on, all part of the society. Again, the, about the only good thing you can say about this is the Europeans are worse. Generally I mean, worse. Their racism is more extreme. Their policies on refugees are more brutal and vicious. I don't think that should make us feel good, frankly. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we're dealing with broad questions.